Well, we're seeking to respond to the statement in the New Testament, Sir, if we would see Jesus, and we're looking for the Lord Jesus in the Old Testament. This is an area of our Bible, the majority of our Bible, sometimes we find it very difficult as we read this to find much purpose and uh, much help in it. And uh, the clue is to find the key of the Bible, and that's Jesus Christ. No one can come to God. No one can have a passion for God unless they know Christ. And uh, the Bible was given that we might uh, know God, and therefore the key of the Bible is Jesus Christ. He's Christ. He's Messiah. He's the Anointed One. And last night, we looked at uh, the question... Is Christ a prophet? Is he a foreteller? Is he the one that reveals God? And the answer is yes. He is the prophet. So everywhere you look in your Old Testament, every prophetic book is telling us about Christ. Every prophet that's mentioned, named and unnamed, by his bad example of being a false prophet, or his example of being a good prophet, the prophet would come and far excel, and he has Jesus Christ. Let's consider a second group of people that were anointed in the Old Testament, and that was the priests. Before a priest could take up his office, he had to be anointed uh, with oil to take this position. And so I want to preach to you this morning on Christ. The preach, uh, the priest who reconciles man to God. Let's pray. Father, thank you that we can gather this morning. Thank you for ministering to our hearts already, the opportunity to sing and hear your uh, truths sung to us, fellowship together, hear your word. We ask now that the Spirit of God would teach us anew and afresh, remind us of things we already know give us new insights of things that we may have not seen or have forgotten, that we might be more like to say. Minister to all of our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. <coughs> well, let's ask the same question we asked last time. We asked, for what is a prophet? Let's ask, what is a priest? And my sketch that I drew up here in the sky of God, a person, and a group of people, the prophet speaks from God to the people, a priest is going to represent the people to God. And uh, so, uh, a priest is someone who's divinely appointed, who stood between God and man. Why is that necessary? Why do we need a priest? Why can't we just go to God? Well, there's a big problem. Uh, one problem is that God is holy, totally holy without sin. And the other problem is we are sinners. And if we were to go in the presence of God being holy as sinners, we would perish. And besides the fact that we wouldn't be allowed into His presence. And so there has to be someone who can go between and solve this problem of a holy God and a sinful and so we find that God uh, tells us that he's going to do that through a priest. Turn in your Bibles, if you would, to that book of Deuteronomy <coughs> and uh, chapter 18. If you remember from last night, it was this very same chapter that gave us the clue about a prophet. And so this is a pivotal chapter in Deuteronomy. We sometimes read the book of Deuteronomy and we think, oh my, this is really hard going. But chapter 18 tells us, in the verses we read last night, 15 through 19, we learned about the prophet that would come. But before that section, in verse 5, we see a biblical definition of a priest. Look what it says in Deuteronomy 18, verse 5. For the Lord thy God 
hath chosen him out of all thy tribes to stand to minister in the name of the Lord, him and his sons forever. Let's take a moment and look closer at that verse. Here we see that the priesthood, God says the priesthood is first of all divinely appointed. He says in verse 4, For the Lord thy God hath chosen him. You can decide that, oh, I'm going to be a priest in the Old Testament economy. If you weren't of the tribe of Levi, you had no oath. In fact, you had to be of the special branch of Levi to even have a possibility of being a priest. The Bible declared to us in the Old Testament that the priesthood was divinely appointed, not self-appointed. You remember in the book of Judges near the end, of course, Judges is a book that demonstrates when everybody does right in their own eyes, it's chaos. It, 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 it's murder. It's immorality. It, it's it's uh, just every imaginable thing possible. Of course, we see this lived out in our day, don't we? Everyone doing right in their own eyes. But in that book, you see someone who tried to make themselves a priest and the folly that came from that. Look back at our verse 5. We see a second thing about the priesthood. It was to be Levitical. It was to be from the family of Levi. God hath chosen him out of all thy tribes. One tribe would have this job. And that was the tribe of Levi. Look at a third thing we see about the priesthood. It was service orientated. They were chosen to stand to minister in the name of the Lord. They're there to serve the people. There the people are. And there's God and this irreconcilable problem. And they are there to minister for the people to God. That was part of the priesthood. Look what else the Bible says about the priesthood. It was to be representative. They're to do it in the name of the Lord. The priests were the authorized representatives to come and present the people to God. The Bible says that right there. They were to do that. Look at another thing about the priesthood. It was perpetual. They're to do it forever. Forever. The last thing, it was to be continual. They're to stand. The work was never done. Remember, there's no seats in the tabernacle. In our class just recently, I thought, I'm going to teach some lessons about the tabernacle. I haven't done it for years. I wonder if anyone will even know what the tabernacle is. So I have this flannel graph uh, with...